installing and configuring the Citrix client. In the last couple of nuggets, we talked about uh, how to configure your presentation server. And, and for this nugget, we're actually going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk specifically about the Citrix client. We're, we're going to talk about the different types of clients, of which there are four. And for those four clients, when you would want to deploy each client type, in which situations would you want to deploy one client type over another and why? We're going to talk about how to install the client onto your workstations, and there's four major ways to do that, either a manual installation or copying to a network share. We're going to talk about uh, packaging up the clients to uh, deploy them using Active Directory and group policy, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to deploy using a web page so that a user can go to Internet Explorer and download and install the client. And throughout this entire section, we're going to talk about the configuration of the clients and for each client, what configuration options are available and, and, and what configuration options you may want to set. So let's begin by talking about the different types of clients. Let me minimize the screen here and bring up another one. And on the screen, I have four different client types here. The program neighborhood client, the program neighborhood agent client, the web client, and the minimal install web client. These are the four clients that are used by users to connect into my Citrix server. Let's talk about them just a little bit in generalities. If I have users that I want to give them the ability to configure their own client, I want to give them a lot of, of power to do their own configurations, then in that case, I'm going to want to give them the program neighborhood client. If I'd like to give them that same sort of rich access to applications, but I, the administrator, would like to do the configuration, then I'd probably want to deliver to them the program neighborhood agent client. This client allows me to control how their Citrix connections look. If I want to give them essentially no uh, configuration control whatsoever, I can give them the web client. This allows them to click on links on a web page or double-click ICA files and access web servers. But there is no client configuration. If I even want to go one step further, I can give them the minimal install web client. The minimal install web client is similar to the web client, but it's used in situations when you want to the users to download as small uh, client installation package as possible. For example, in the minimal install web client, I don't have things such as COM port mapping or the universal print driver or client audio. So the first question you're going to ask is, where do I get these clients? Let me move over to my Windows XP system. This is a basic Windows XP Service Pack 2 system. I'm running Internet Explorer and I'm at the Citrix downloads or the Citrix web page. I'm going to click on the download link. And from here, I'm going to click on the link for clients. This is going to bring me to the list of available clients. From here, you'll see uh, there are a number of different options for clients I can download from the Citrix web page. Now, this, this menu is going to change over time as versions change or as additional software changes. So let me point out the ones that we see on the screen here, the Access Gateway, the Access Suite. Uh, here we see Citrix Presentation Server. And this is the client that we're looking for, specifically the client packager in the most recent version. In this case, the version is 9.2. If I click on this version, I get the option of choosing multiple languages. And here it's very important. The version number that I'm looking for, I'm usually always looking for the most recent version number and obviously the language of, of, that's appropriate for me. And I would click the link here to get the software. This is going to download the Citrix, uh, Citrix packaging tool. This tool includes all of the clients available for me. It includes the web client, includes the uh, program neighborhood agent, and the program neighborhood client. If I scroll down a little bit further, you'll see I have more download versions down here at the bottom. And here's where I can choose to select any one of these additional downloads. If I choose web version, for example, I'm going to go to a new web page that's going to say, for my language, do I want to download an .exe or a .cab file? These .exe files are used if I want to do a, a manual installation or, or a scripted installation, where I just double-click the .exe file and it would do the or install the file directly on the machine. The .cab files are used if I want to post this to a web page somewhere, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. If I want to post this to a web page somewhere and have my clients automatically download and install it uh, through a web page. Let me go back and. Right now, right now, what I want to show you is actually the, uh, the full client packager. So I'm going to download this and begin the installation. So let me click here for Get Software. And I'm going to pause it while I download it and start the installation. So I've paused the actual the recording while the uh, client came down from the internet. 
and uh, I've restarted now that the uh, the installation has begun. Obviously, I need to click next to begin the installation and accept the license agreement. If you remember the uh, Citrix presentation server license agreement, for some reason I don't have to scroll to the bottom here. Very strange. Either way, um, in the next screen I get the option to choose which of the clients I'm interested in installing on this local machine. I can choose the program neighborhood, the program neighborhood agent, or the web client. So I can show you all three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave all three and install them on this workstation. Because the program neighborhood agent requires a web interface server for its configuration, I need to punch in the server URL here. And in the case of, the, of this example, my web server that has the web interface installed is CTX Nugget 1. We, we talked about this in a previous Nugget. In the next, in the next uh, screen, I choose the program folder. And in this screen, I choose what do I want to make my client name. I can, I can make my machine name the same as my client name if I want. And this is generally the recommended setting. But if for some reason you want to make your Citrix clients different from what your machine names are, you can make that change here. Lastly, this is the pass-through that we talked about during the presentation server installation. Would you like to use our local username and password to log on to MetaFrame sessions from this computer? I can enable pass-through if I want. In this case, I'm not going to do it, so I can show you how, to, how that we would add our username and password into the configuration. I can enable the quick launch bar if I want, and I can enable custom ICA settings. The quick launch bar gives me a, uh, a quick location where I can launch applications within the Citrix client. And custom ICA connections allows me to create additional ICA connections that me as the well me as the user to create custom ICA connections that the administrator may not have already pre-generated for me. In this case, I want to show this to you, so I'll leave that checked. And we get the installation summary. I click next one more time, and the Citrix client installs. I click finish to complete the install. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the Citrix Program Neighborhood Client. If I click here under Citrix, you'll see MetaFrame Access Clients and Program Neighborhood. Inside of Program Neighborhood, I'm going to see pretty much a blank screen. And then once the client uh, is, is complete with the startup process, I get this box asking for my username and password. I've, I've punched it in here. If I want to retain this username and password, I can click the checkbox here to save that password. And you'll see that I now have access to an application set manager. You notice here that the Nugget Notepad just appeared. What my client has just done is it is connected to the, the Citrix farm. It has asked the farm, OK, what published applications do I have available? And it has presented me with those published applications. Now, obviously, the first question you're going to ask is, where did it get this Nugget Notepad? And we're going to talk about publishing applications in a later section, but if I move back to my Citrix server, you'll see here that I've published Nugget Notepad under here, under Applications. Like I said, we'll discuss how to publish applications later, but just take it for granted that I've published this application and it is available to me as a domain user. If I double-click the Nugget Notepad, I'm going to connect to my Citrix MetaFrame server. I'm going to open up Notepad. And you'll see now I'm running Notepad on the MetaFrame server, but I'm seeing it here on my client. I'm effectively acting as a user uh, and connecting into my Citrix server. Let me close this down here. And now your next question is going to be, well, how did this client know that it needed to go to the Nugget farm to enumerate the application set? Well, let's go to settings here. And you'll see that in settings, I have the connection type set to local area network, which is an option between that, wide area network, and dial-up. And down here, I'm auto-detecting the network protocol. You see my network protocol here is set to TCP IP. If my client's network protocol is set to TCP IP, then the first thing it's going to attempt to do is send a UDP broadcast over port 1604 to any server on the subnet that's listening. Now, because my Citrix server is on the same subnet as my Citrix client, this is going to function. I'm actually going to enumerate applications. But um, as you know, or as you probably know, broadcasts usually don't traverse subnets. If your networking gear is set up properly, then you're probably not allowing broadcasts to, to traverse beyond subnet boundaries. So if you have this TCP IP set as your network protocol and you're relying on broadcasts to, to operate, you're probably going to have a hard time. In a lot of these cases, what we do is we reset 
from TCP IP to TCP IP plus HTTP. In this situation, instead of attempting to do a broadcast, what my client will then do is attempt to do a DNS lookup on the host called ICA. Now, there's going to be some work involved for you as the administrator. You're going to have to create a mapping for the host called ICA in your DNS. And if it is in there, point that ICA to a host or a Citrix server that uh, is, is ready to respond to requests for, for um, application sets. So there's a two-step process. One, you have to deploy clients with the network protocol set to TCP IP plus HTTP. And two, you'll need to create this ICA mapping. Once that's done, you'll be able to get these application sets, just like we said before. So let me go back into settings again. I clicked out of there a little too fast. Let me click on the default options screen, and we'll talk about some of the other default options for this client. Obviously, I've got use data connection checked, and I can also use the disk cache for bitmaps, the disk cache on the local disk. I can queue up mouse keyboards and uh, mouse movements and keystrokes for uh, greater performance capability, and also I can enable session reliability. Now, this one's important because in order for me to enable session reliability, I need to configure it both on the server and on the client. So if I check this box here, and then back on my Citrix server, like we talked about in the previous nugget, we enable session reliability either for the farm or for the individual server, then session reliability will be enabled. I can also turn off any desktop integrations for this application set. Uh, I, can, I can make them so that the, the icons for these application sets won't appear on the desktop, which is an option I can enable. I can set the server defaults for sound and for encryption if I want. I can set it to you know, a different type of, uh, of sound quality. I can also enable speed stream latency reduction if I want. And then I can choose if I don't want uh, the default properties for Windows, I can set them to a higher or a lower color depth, color bit depth, or a different window size. Now, you saw when I double clicked on the Nugget Notepad over here that the Notepad appeared in, in such a way that it looked like it was a, actually running on the client. Now, this is called Seamless Windows. You notice here I have select Seamless Windows for my window size. I can also choose to make it a percent of the screen size or the full screen or, or custom, or I can give it a particular um, um, screen resolution if I want. A lot of times if I'm deploying applications and published, and published applications, I want to make them seamless so that my, my users have the perception that the application they're working on actually is on their client. So in a lot of cases, you want to leave this set for seamless windows. You notice here the login information. Before this was not populated, but now it's populated with my user specified credentials. And I've got the save password button here as well. You'll notice I can also use a lo local user using pass through or even smart card authentication for connecting into my Citrix server. Now, when I was installing Program Neighborhood onto this client, you remember I get the option to install the custom ICA connection option. And I did that because Maybe I want to create my own connections to the Citrix server. I don't, I'm not really interested in what the administrator tells me I can have. I want to create my own connections. Probably wouldn't want to provide that option to some of my users, but if I'm the administrator, it comes in handy for me to create these custom connections. If I double click, I get this add ICA connection option, and that opens up a wizard to create a new custom connection. The first thing I do is, connect, uh, is select my connection type via local area network or wide area network. I click Next, and I get the choice to choose a description. In this case, I'm going to create a connection to uh, CTX Nugget 1's desktop. So I'll call it that here, CTX Nugget 1 desktop. I'll select the network protocol my computer will use to com communicate. And here I can even type in the server name for the server I wish to connect to, which is CTX Nugget 1. In the next screen, I get the option of entering my username and password and domain. I don't have to put information in here, but I can if I want. The next screen gives me those same options we talked about before for window colors and window size. I'm just going to choose the default in this case. And then I can give a, a file name for an application to be run. So after I connect to my Citrix server, what application do I want to run? And also, what working directory do I want to use for that application? And in this case, I want a desktop. I don't want to run an application, so I'll leave those blank. I get the last screen, I choose Finish, and you'll see now I have a new icon in my program neighborhood. As before, if I double-click that icon, 
I'm going to begin the connection to that MetaFrame server, and after it completes the connection, I'll get a desktop. You see here I get the desktop just like I would get as if I was logging onto the console of my Citrix server. I, I log in now. And similar to a regular logon, I see at the bottom my start menu, I get my computer, etc., etc. Now again, this is really handy for me as an administrator because I may want to log on to my desktop but I may not want to provide that desktop access to my users. My, for users, I may want to provide them only a certain application, perhaps the application why I bought Citrix, um, an SAP application, or Microsoft Office, or, or even just Notepad. I want to give them that specialized, seamless access to their applications, but I don't want them to see the Start button. So this is useful for me as an administrator, or in those situations when I want to provide full desktop access to my users. Now, if I click the X here, that clicking the X will actually, choose, will actually disconnect this session from the Citrix server. Now, this is often a big problem with uh, Citrix sessions whenever we provide the full desktop, is the users are so used to hitting the X button up here to close the window that they, they close the window. And what happens is that actually disconnects that session but it does not free up those resources until the session disconnect time is, is, has run out. So it is a best practice anytime you, you connect to a Citrix full desktop that you actually choose start and log off because that will free up the available network resources instead of hitting the X. So let's actually switch gears here a little bit. Let's actually close out of Citrix program neighborhood and switch to one of the other clients that we can use to connect to our Citrix server. And that client is the Citrix program neighborhood agent. Down here in the right, lower right corner of my screen, I have this icon that you see that I'm hovering over right here. And it says that the program neighborhood agent is currently not connected. If I double click this icon, I have the option of entering in my username and password. And you notice that the icon sort of lights up when the screen flashes for a minute. Now, now what have I just done? I've actually connected my workstation into, program, into my Citrix server using Program Neighborhood Agent. I get this new icon that appears. This is my Program Neighborhood Applications. And also, if I click on the Start button and click All Programs, you'll see that my my Nugget Notepad application that was installed or that I, that I created on my Citrix server now appears in the Start menu. Now, now before with Program Neighborhood, Program Neighborhood was an application for maybe my power users or my administrators to be able to create their own connections to their Citrix servers. Or uh, if I wanted to give them more control over those connections, but if I want to give them less control and force the applications down onto their workstations, I can install Citrix Program Neighborhood Agent. So I have the option using Program Neighborhood Agent to add these items here into people's, uh, into people's start menus. I could also potentially add them on the desktop if I wanted. If I double click my Program Neighborhood applications, you'll see that the, the Nugget Notepad is now an available application here inside of this window. So I can deploy applications in a way that my, I as the administrator want to deploy down to my users. If at any point my users want to stop being connected to my Citrix server, they can right click on this program neighborhood agent and choose log off. You'll see that the, uh, the applications here in the screen and also in the start menu disappear. Now, there is a server side component to uh, configuring program neighborhood agent. We'll talk about that in a later, later nugget, but for the purposes of this, so you understand what the clients do, that's what program neighborhood agent does. So the last client I want to show you is the web client. And the web client does just exactly what you think it does. If I go to a web page and type in this web URL, which would be the CTX Nugget 1 and slash Citrix slash MetaFrame, et cetera, et cetera, this will take me to the web interface for presentation server page. I can punch in my username. I can punch in my password. I can punch in the domain, just like I have previously to now. And as I log in, you'll notice that I have a web-based access to the same Nugget Notepad application that I had using the other different clients. Now, this uses the web interface, or the web client. The web client has absolutely no configuration capability whatsoever, so there's really nothing to show you for what it does. But just 
just be aware that if I click on this Nugget Notepad, it would sh start up the same Nugget Notepad using the configuration that I set inside of the Presentation Server console. So those are the three consoles, those are the three, three clients and, and how they work and how they operate and why you would want to use them. So I'm going to flip back to my Presentation Server. And you'll notice here on the upper right-hand corner of the screen, I've got a folder named Clients. I've conveniently downloaded the clients onto this machine so you can take a look at what the clients are. We talked about the different types of clients, and you can see here that we have four different packages that we can install. The first of which is this ICA32.exe package. This package is the program neighborhood package. If I go back to the Citrix website, scroll to the bottom, and I have the option of downloading just the program neighborhood components, you would receive this ICA32.exe package. Just below it is ICA32A.exe, and that actually is the program neighborhood agent. That installs just the agent uh, components. And again, that's also located on the bottom of the Citrix web page. The 32T package is slightly smaller, as you can see, because that's just the web components. And so these are the three .exes I could use to do a manual installation of any of these components onto a machine. This ICA32PKG.MSI file is the client packager, which includes all the different components that I can use to install uh, any of the clients that I want. So let's assume that I've already gone to the Citrix website and I've downloaded this ICA32PKG.MSI file. And I want to create an administrative installation of this file on my machine so I can choose some of the components that I'd like to choose um, in, in, in creating a custom package. So in order to do this, I'm going to open up the command prompt and I'm going to type MSI exec slash A for created administrative installation. And then I'm going to create a link to the path of this MSI file, which is uh, documents and settings, et cetera, et cetera, ICA32PKG.MSI. And you'll see that that actually starts the Windows installer program. And, and it's slightly different now because it's the client packager setup. If I click Next, I'm going to choose a network installation point. That's the point where I'm going to, to uncompress the package. I get the option of creating an installer package either as an uncompressed package, I can then or, or I th can then recom recompress the package back into cabinet files, or I can create a single Windows installer file that contains all the source files created in the directory. It, it, it really doesn't matter which of these I use, it just has to do with how much this disk space I want to, uh, uh, to consume and how I want to deploy that package. So I'm going to choose the defaults here. I'm going to click Next, then I go through the license agreement once again. And let's say for this particular example, I'm only interested in deploying just the web client. And so people that are going to use this package are only going to get the web client because they're users I don't really trust to have their own configuration control. I click Next. I get the option to choose either using the machine name as a client name or letting the user that's doing the installation specify, specify a client name. I, I don't, don't want the users to specify their own client name, so I'll make the client name similar to the machine name. We don't want our users to have any decisions as to what they do. And yes, I, I think we'd, I'd like to use the local username and password to log on to MetaFrame sessions from this computer. I don't necessarily care about Kerberos in this environment, so I'll click yes. And I have the option of selecting the quick launch bar, custom ICA connections. I'm not in interested in either of these because, again, I'm trying to lock this down to just a Citrix client that only I can control the configuration. I can either allow upgrade or allow downgrade if the package is older or newer than the existing client version. I, I want to upgrade older clients, but it, I don't really want to downgrade existing clients that are already at a higher level. And then I have this option to add or, or to display or to hide the dialog boxes for the install. If I choose to remove all the dialog boxes, then what I have is effectively a silent installation. So when the, 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 the user or the installing technician double clicks this file, they're not going to get any of these dialog boxes. They're only going to get the file that, or the, the, the application to complete the installation. This is, uh, if you're used to deploying software using SMS or Altiris or one of those application tools, this is a great way to create a quiet installation for deployment through a software management tool, like, again, like SMS or like uh, Altiris. I get the installation summary like usual. I click Next. And the, uh, the files are now being copied to this ICA32PKG folder on the root of the C drive. In fact, I can go there right now while I'm waiting for the, uh, for the uh, uh, installation to finish. Here's the folder. 
I think, yep, we're finished. I go to the folder, and you'll see I now have a single MSI file that includes already all of those, those decisions that I've already made. I've, I've already decided how I want that client deployed. Now, if I were to double-click this MSI file, that would begin the installation. You'll notice there's, there's nothing going on here. I'm, I'm not seeing any installation complete, but since I've double-clicked this installation, that install is actually going on in the background. I'm not going to get any, any error messages. So that when this is complete, you'll see that just a second ago that the, uh, the hourglass appeared, so I'm probably complete with the installation. I can check the task manager processes to see if uh, the MSI exec process is still running and it appears it still is. And once the MSI exec process completes, I'll actually have a complete installation of, in this case, just the, the web client onto my system. Now, previous, previously using the XEs, I showed you how to double click the XEs to do a manual installation. You could take those XEs and put them on a file share so that people could, could download those off the file share and uh, uh, do the installation there themselves. And now I've showed you how to complete a, a silent installation of the, uh, the Citrix client by repackaging it using MSI exec. You'll see here that now that the, the install is complete, I'm being prompted to reboot my system to complete the configuration changes. Sometimes uh, a, a reboot is required to complete the configuration changes. Because this file has been encapsulated into an MSI file now, if you're a person who is comfortable with Active Directory and deploying packages with Active Directory, you can use Active Directory and Group Policy to deploy this MSI file to, to users in an organizational unit using Group Policy objects. Okay, so we've got one more way of installing the clients, and that's by using a web page. Now, just a second ago, I paused the recording and actually went back to the Citrix, web, uh, Citrix Systems web page and went to the, the downloads and the client downloads. And you'll see here, this is the web version 9.2. And you remember we talked about these CAB files and how you can download these CAB files and apply them to a web page and put some code on your web page. And then your, your, your Internet Explorer would actually complete the download for you. I've downloaded the CAB file here. Let me actually show you what the code would be that you would add to the web page that would enable this download. So let me bring up Notepad here, and I'll show you what the code is. This code is actually available inside the, uh, the client for 32-bit Windows Administrator Guide, the, which is a lot of words to say for the Citrix Client Guide. But you can see here it's just a piece of XML that says, OK, I'm going to connect to uh, uh, some web server in some directory, and then I'm going to uh, connect to this WFICACAT.cab. I'll have to drop that into the correct directory. Now, the actual uh, coding of the web page is a little out of scope for the CCA itself, but just the knowledge that you can actually use a web page to, to download this WFICAT.cab file from Internet Explorer and install it onto your system is what you need to know for the test. Um, it's very important that if you do add this to a web page that you put whatever web server this is, whatever the web page is, into your trusted root so that uh, Internet Explorer doesn't barf whenever you try to, uh, to connect it. So just be aware that this is a possible way for you to connect, to a, to, or connect your clients to a, a web server and actually download and install the, uh, the Citrix client. So closing out with uh, our list of things we wanted to talk about for this nugget, we talked about these four different types of clients, and we, we discussed when we would want to deploy each client type, under, under what circumstances and what user types would we want to deploy each client type. Uh, we talked about the client installation and the four different methods, uh, manual through a network share, by packaging it up and uh, creating an MSI that could be deployed through Active Directory silently, or by adding it to a web page so that we can get that client on to, get that Citrix client onto our workstations. And throughout this entire section, we talked about configuration of the client and, and the, the configuration settings that are of interest. I, uh, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.